تبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون والحمد لله الذي من علينا بمحمد صلى الله عليه وآله وبآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين واللعنة دائمة على أعدائهم ومبغضيهم وغاسبي حقوقهم من ليلنا هذا إلى يوم الدين صلوات Originally I had thought of speaking tonight in Urdu because that was the understanding that English lectures will be confined to Fridays only. But I have a feeling that it's absolutely necessary for our young men and women who might be present here to understand the historical aspect of the existence of our 12th Imam alayhi salam and about his concealment or ghaiba or occultation much more than pondering over its intricate philosophical points we first have got to know the basics because the days we are now living in are the days of skepticism and doubt and these days were foretold by our aim alayhi salam right from the day of hazrat imam muhammad e baqir salawatullah wa salam alayh when the people asked him ya aba jafar hal anta mahdiyun are you mahdi he said no mahdi will be the fifth son of our seventh mahdi will be the fifth son of our seventh and he will be the one about whom people will doubt some will say he was never born and some will say he was born but he died and even the nearest ones that means those who profess to be with us will doubt the existence and there will come there will come a time when there will be selected few who will be steadfast and flinching on the path of iman this is what he said at the time of our seventh imam because there were certain sects in islam which started believing and promulgating that the seventh khalif after the prophet is a new prophet and that sect exists even today but they don't subscribe to this view these days but it is there in their history if they were to tell us what are their beliefs you'll find this is one of the beliefs that every seventh after the prophet must be a prophet with a permit sharia they went to our seventh imam and said hal antal mahdi are you the mahdi and the seventh imam alayhi salam said i am not mahdi mahdi will be the fifth one born in my line there is a dua which we have been asked to read it's not wajib it is mustahab to read every friday asr if you read those lines you'll find that we complain and we say ya allah we are living in a time when people are asking us if you have an imam where is he and when will he appear ya allah give us that faith that we may remain steadfast and we may not change a new phrase has been coined which is really at the moment in the minds of many people under the name of scholarship and that new phrase is concept 
of Mahdi. We never knew it as a concept, we knew it as a matter of faith. There's nothing like conceptualizing. But we are now told that the, there is something like concept, and that concept naturally has a history of development. And it developed among the Shias alone because they were the oppressed people. And every oppressed community will always believe, would like to believe, that there will be a savior. Therefore we developed a concept that there will be a savior at the end of time whose name will be Mahdi. That means Mahdawiyya or other Mahdism as we call it is neither found in Quran nor in Hadith. Therefore it is a later day development. Therefore interpolation or innovation and Islam did not preach about it. This is a type of thinking that is going on at the moment. If you all remember in 1979-80 when there was an uproar in Mecca, someone who claimed to be Mahdi entered into Haram. You remember those days? And the Saudi Arabian government had to enter the haram with the tanks and try to capture them. The story of Juhainam who claimed to be Mahdi. Remember that story. It is an event which took place. Someone claimed to be Mahdi entered into Kaaba and remained there with his followers and friends for so many days till they were expelled and killed. At that time, the Rais of University of Medina, Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, was asked a question with the hope that he will say there is nothing like Mahdi. The question was, is there anything like Mahdi in Islam? Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz is the head of Wahhabis, huh? he's not the head of Shias or Sunnis, Wahhabis. And his answer is printed, he says, Wa amrul Mahdiyu, amrun thabit, wa amrun ma'loom. The matter of Mahdi is a well-known matter and well-proven. وَالْأَحَادِيثُ فِيهِ مُسْتَفِيضَةٌ بَلْ مُتَوَاتِرَةٌ مُتَعَاضِدَةٌ And the hadith from the Prophet which we have on the matter of Mahdi is in abundance, not only in abundance, is sequentially connected. That means one after the other. There is no broken chain in those hadith. Muta'avida each supporting the other, no contradiction. فَأَمْرُهُ ثَابِتٌ وَخُرُوجُهُ لَا بُدَّ مِنْ As far as his affair is concerned, his matter is concerned, his existence is concerned, it is a matter well proven and evidenced, and as far as his reappearance is concerned, there is no escape. He has written you can't escape from it. It is there. So the world was silent because the man has saw it himself. They thought he would say there is nothing like me. He will reject. But there is no point of rejection. Why? The matter has been reported by Ahlu Sunnah and Tashayyu from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. There is no question of the concept developing later. The Prophet said, and today I'm going to present to you the whole summary of a hadith in very brief, in a very brief way, but it will give you an insight into. Because the Prophet first presented the hadith in a broad-based manner and went on adding qualifications one after the other till he pinpointed who Mahdi will be the beauty of presentation of hadith 
and this is not only from Shia but from Ahlu Sunnah brothers, including the most prejudicial Musannif, the one who wrote with Ranka, Ibn Hajar al Makki, says the Prophet first said, Al Mahdi min Quraysh. Mahdi will be from Quraysh. Now, this is very broad. Quraysh had so many tribes. Right? They write Ahlu Sunnah that soon after that, the Prophet said, Ana wa Ali wa Hamza wa Ja'far wa Hassan wa Hussein wa Mahdi min Abdul Muttalib. So there is a qualification now. Not from all Quraysh. Ali and I, Hamza and Ja'far, Hassan and Hussein and Mahdi, we are the children of Abdul Muttalib. So now it is in Banu Hashim. So it is again restricted. But Abdul Muttalib had many children. So again. Innahu min wuldi ismuhu ismi wa kunyatuhu kunyati. The one who will come as Mahdi will be my son. That means from my descendant. That means he will be from Abdul Muttalib, but Alu Muhammad. Salawatullah wa salam. Again, he restricted. But Alu Muhammad, there are many. People have put so many things in it. People say, we are all Alu Muhammad. Do you know that? There is an argument that Al means community. So all of us are Al Muhammad. So he said, Ibn Majah, Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaah. If nothing remains but a day for this world to end, Labaathallahu Rajulam min Ahli Bayti. Allah will send a person from my Ahli Bayt. That means he will be from my descendant, but he will be from Ahlul Bayt. But from Ahlul Bayt also many would like to creep inside. So one day he said, In Aliyan Wasiyi, this Ali is my Wasi. Wal Hujjatul Muntadaru min Wulbi. And the one who is awaited, Mahdi, will be from his descendants, again restricted, as it goes further. But then Ali had many children. So he said one day, Inna al-Mahdi min wuldi Fatima. He will be there, but he is from the descendants of Fatima. So again now, it goes on. As you see, the triangle is gone up towards the apex. Again, in wuldi Fatima, there can be Many. Hassan, Hussein. Allahu Akbar. Sheikh Sulaiman al Qunduzi al Hanafi, in his book Yanabi al Mawadda, says that one day Salman Farsi was sitting and the Prophet had Imam Hussein in his, on his laps, kissing his cheek, cheeks, and then saying, Ya Hussein. Anta Sayyidun wa Abnu Sayyidin wa Akhu Sayyid. You are a Sayyid, brother of Sayyid, son of Sayyid. Wa Anta Hujjatun wa Abnu Hujjati wa Akhu Hujjatin wa Abu Hujjatin Tis'atin Tasi'uhum Al-Mahdi. You are the authority from God, son of an authority, brother of an authority, a father of an authority, nine, one after the other, the last one, the ninth one, will be the Mahdi. That means even from the children of Fatima, Mahdi is the son of Hussein. So, sealed. But now, even in the sons of Hussein, there can be many. So he himself writes, and many people ask, do we have the names of our 12 Imams in Ahlul Sunnah books? So I'm presenting it today. Sheikh Sulaiman al Qanduzi al Hanafi. Yanabi al Mawadda is a famous book. 
The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "I shall have twelve khulafa after me. Twelve. You ask any other Muslim other than Shia school of thought, count those twelve. They can never count. Although they have more than twelve, they can never count. They don't know who to put, who to exclude. You see, and here there are twelve." So, a Sahabi stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, hal tu sammihum li, will you give me the names of those? Faqala hadha Ali. This Ali, wa lamma mada Ali ibnuhu Hassan, wa lamma mada Hassan ibnuhu, aw akuhu Hussein, wa lamma mada Hussein ibnuhu Ali, wa lamma mada Ali ibnuhu Muhammad, wa lamma mada Muhammad ibnuhu Ja'far, ولما مضى جعفر ابنه موسى ولما مضى موسى ابنه علي ولما مضى علي ابنه محمد ولما مضى محمد ابنه علي ولما مضى علي ابنه حسن ولما مضى حسن ابنه محمد العسكري محمد محمد all the 12 names سليمان القندوزي يا انا ريبيت يا نبي المودح There's no doubt about it now. Now, if you are asking about the concept of Mahdi, well, it, the root of it is in Hadith, and the Hadith by the Prophet, reported by both. وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى The Prophet does not speak of his own accord. Whenever he speaks, it is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no question of Now, Yes, he was born, but he died. Or, who is the witness? The Shia scholars writing that there is no witness of his birth except his aunt, Hakim. Now, when I was born, who is the witness? I mean, don't talk of what you see today, huh? an old man sitting before you. The day I was born, who was the witness? There can only be three witnesses. One is the midwife. One is the mother herself. And one is the father or whoever may be nearer there. Is there anyone else? Hakima bin Khatun, Hakima bin Taya, Ali, Muhammad ibn Ali. That means the daughter of Muhammad Taqi alayhi salam. And the sister of Imam Ali al-Naqi was there as a midwife when Imam alayhi salam was born. When she came out, she said, Muhammad is born. Now, is there anything wrong in that? Could you have anybody else as a witness? And Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam told his companions that Qadja sahibukum, your master has come. Who will be your master after me? Now, what do you want? But Mufid alayhi rahmah, God may bless his soul with rahmah. He knew these things. In his book, he has given a list of 12 witnesses. Who saw Imam Zaman salam after his birth? And he said, These are the witnesses who saw him. Right? How can he live very long, as long as today? If I were asked this 20, 30 years ago, I would have gone into all sorts of trouble to give you all the answers. But in the day and age that I am living today, if anyone asks me that question, it smacks of ignorance. I will laugh at him. For what is time but relativity? Is it not time relative? Huh? The month of Ramadan is coming, inshallah, you will have the experience, practical experience of how time is relative. When the last minute for iftar will be left, last one minute only. As they say in Urdu, ayame musibat to kate nahi katte, or din aish ke ghariyon mein guzar jate hain kaise. One minute left to the torture of fasting. 
and the second meter you'll be breaking the fast. And my watch happens to be a bit late. It shows me two minutes. And Mukhisab shows one minute. And all the Mominin, they show, they'll, they'll fight with me, they'll quarrel. Time take you, sir. That's it. For one minute, there can be raised voices. And believe me, those last five minutes don't travel, they plod. Hajibi a minute. Haji a minute. Those five minutes, the last five minutes, we feel as if the watch suddenly has slowed down. Why? Because time is relative. After iftar, you don't know how time passes. Suddenly it is morning. Fast again. Time is relative, my friends. I have given several examples. If I were told tonight that your son, whom you have not seen for ten years, is arriving tomorrow at Heathrow Airport at 4, 4 a.m. I haven't seen him for ten years. And arriving at 4 a.m., tell me how will the time pass? Slowly. Every time I look, it's still 12. It is still one. What has happened to the clock? It is not traveling. I want to go to the airport to see my son. It will not travel as fast as I want. But if I am told tomorrow, four o'clock in the morning, inshallah, you will be hanged, then? Then the clock will travel fast. This is what happens. Why go very far? There is only one clock there which belongs to you and to me. For you, you are praying to Allah, when will this man come down? He has been going on for the last 30 minutes. For me, it is traveling very fast. It is not faithful to me. You see? So time is relative, my friends. In the day and age, when it is well known that there can be a possibility at certain speed, in a certain plane and certain atmosphere, where even time may travel backwards, Scientifically proved, at that time you are asking me that how can he live for so long? He who created. That length of time is relative. You think in terms of thousand years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not thinking in terms of thousand years. Quran says on the day of Qiyamah, when all of us will rise, each of us will be asked, for how long have you been on earth? Someone will say 100, someone will say 70, someone will say 50. No, none of them will say that. Everyone will say, we have been there for half a day or even less. Labisna yawman aw ba'ava yawm. After having lived for years, because that atmosphere, that plane is different from this. There, your attitude will change. You will think that you have just stayed for a few hours on earth while you have passed life. So for Imam alayhi salam to be here with us, so asking these questions in this day and age when the scientific attitude has totally overhauled our thinking. But what is the use of being raib? The question is that they haven't understood what raiba is. They consider ghaiba as absence. Ghaiba is not absence. Ghaiba is not being seen. Remember that. Not being seen is something else and being absent is something else. That Imam who calls himself Hazir Imam does not know what is happening. He is absent. That who is ghaib knows everything that is happening. He is a witness to what I do. The day a moment says, ah, Imam Zamana says, ah, ten times. For the anguish, for the pain that you experience as a Shia, Ibn Ashari. When you say, ah, Imam Zamana responds hundred times. To say, ah, when the affliction comes to Shia community, to the Muslim community in general, he is the one who prays for us and agonizes. So that ghaiba is a witness, not absence. And that is the reason why tonight many of us will write Ariva. It is not wajib to write Ariva. But it is actually a proof that I believe that his Ghaiba does not stop for communication. I will write. 
I will write. Whatever I want to write, I will write. In Arabic, it is written that you are my wasila, you are my intermediary. I will write whatever I want him to pray for me. And I will send it either to the well or to the flowing water or to the spring or even bury it or in the well. But that will be a gesture to say, Ya Yabda Rasulillah. And it is not only for 15th of Shaban, my friend. This Ariza is for all over the year. Whenever you are in a problem, that is the result that you must seek. That go to your Imam alayhi salam and seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through him. So that is what he is. Born in 255 Hijra on 15th of Shaban, early in the morning. At the time of his father, Imam Hassan Askari's wafat, he was five years old. And just as Imam salam was martyred, Imam Hassan Askari salam, the rulers of the time, Abbasid Khalif, sent people into the house in search of any boy, if he was there. Why? Because they had been told and the Prophet had foretold and the Hadith was known by both. Those who believed in Ahlul Bayt and those who did not believe. The Hadith was famous that there will be a boy in the school of Ahlul Bayt who will be the final authority. He will fill this earth with peace and justice. The way it would have been filled earlier with inequities and injustice. And they knew that this is the man who will come with the sword. They wanted to find out if he was there. They came in not once, three times. And they did not find our Imam there. At the time of namaz janaza of Imam Hassan Askar alayhi salam, his, uh, his brother, Jafar, who, who is known as Jafar al-Kazzab also, but we call him nowadays Jafar al-Tawwab, that he might have repented. Imam Hassan Askar, his brother, he came out claiming to be the Imam. And he said that I am going to lead namaz janaza of my brother, because I am an Imam. Immediately he stood before the people, to say Allahu Akbar from the door, adjoining door, a young boy of five came up and said, Uncle, you are not Imam, I am the Imam and I will lead the prayers. And he led the prayers. And the people saw him. That here is the Hujjah Abdul Hassan, Hassan's son Hujjah, who has led the prayers. And then people started coming with homes, with zakat with Masail, asking questions. For 74 years, it was ghaibat e -sohra. At the end, he made two very obvious and distinct. He gave two guidelines, very obvious. One, there was a letter written to him. If you go into ghaibat e kubra when will you appear? When will you reappear? What will be the time of Zuhur? Imam al Islam has written, In al Amr, Lahu Ta'ala Zikruh. It belongs to Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala alone. Kadib al Waqqatun. Whoever gives you time, he's a liar. Whoever gives you time. After 10 years, after 8 years, after 5 years, these are all humbugs and fabrications. There is no time. For no one knows about his coming, even he, our Imam al Islam, does not know when he will come. The only one who knows is Ta'ala Zikru, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the very fact that Imam al Islam wrote, Kadhib al Waqqatun, the time givers are liars because he knew that there will be time givers. Those who will give time. Nostradamus said 1999. You see, somebody said 2000. Someone in Pakistan said 1995. This year, this year, huh? and so on. All these are 
lies. We don't know. It must be said, Innahu sirrum min sirrillah. Simple. There is no apology about it. Innahu sirrum min sirrillah. Matwiyatum min khalqillah. Imam al-Islam. It is a secret among the secrets of God, folded up from the people nobody knows. Only he knows. He knows when and he knows why. The rest is all speculation. Conjecture has got no. And the second one is this. Whoever claims to have seen me in a premeditated way, that means as if by appointment, that means you, you write a letter, Molana, I want to see you tomorrow, and he says, come at four o'clock. This is not called liqa, this is called mukashafa, or this is called mushahada. For many bil mushahada, whoever claims this sort of meeting, fa innahu kadibun muftar. That man is accusing me, alleging something, and it is lie. What happens in the case of Imam alayhi salam is not mushahada, that means not meeting by premeditated arrangement, uh, mukashifa. Mukashifa is that you meet him without knowing that he is there. When he disappears, then you realize that you were with your Imam al You understand? And that also, you may not remember his features, you may not remember him. Most of the time, people do not meet Imam al salam. People meet his companions. You go to Makkah sometimes, you go to Medina, you meet his companions and you feel that you have met Imam alayhi salam. Because his companions also, Ashab, they come for Umrah, they come for Hajj and they meet the special ones they want to meet without knowing, without he knowing that who is shaking his hand. And Imam alayhi salam said, when a mu'min dies, wherever he is, I am there. And I may be there as someone you know, and you may not even care to say special salam because he is the one who regularly comes. It may be me. And I am in Hajj, and I pray for you. And I pray for the Ummah. Oh, my Ummah, you will undergo all sorts of afflictions and problems and agony, but sovereign. Sobra. Be patient. Be patient. Well, this is what it is, my friends. Now, there are certain signs which signs have been repeatedly mentioned. Signs of Imam alayhi salam's reappearance. What will happen before he comes? Now, remember in this sign, these signs, we share this with all the three religions of, of scriptures. We share the signs of the end of time with Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. These are called apocalyptic signs in Bible. What will happen at the end of time? And we have hadith, one after the other, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, May I tell you what will happen as the time draws near and before the day of judgment arrives, Mahdi will come. May I tell you what will happen? And the people listened to him. Now, he said what he said. Examples. He said that namaz will be totally forgotten. People will start forgetting namaz. People will start forgetting reading Quran. It will be thrown back. It will only be there in the homes for adoration and adornment. Mu'min will be disbelieved. A liar will be believed. A truthful person will not be believed. The business people, the rich people will rule in spite of the fact that they don't have the qualities to rule. And the mu'min, if he is poor, will not be heard 
in spite of the fact that he may have the qualities to lead and so on and so on and there are certain very interesting features like the whole world will be one market and someone said ya rasulullah how can that be he said you will eat fruits without season and we do it don't we nowadays it to be one market <coughs> Now, there came a school of thought, which has come recently, also again. He said, Mullah Sahib, if we do all this, we forget Quran, we forget namaz, we become liars, we become lewd and shameless, then we are doing some service, we are hastening the reappearance of Imam. Because unless that happens, he will not come. So we do this so that he will... Now this is what is the thinking. Why? Because what they have forgotten is that if the Prophet had said only this much, that there will be bad people who will do this and that, then of course we would have said, all right, let us be among the group. But what about those people for whom the Prophet said they will be the one who will be sufferers? Why don't you be among those who will be the sufferers? The believers. So that whatever befalls, befalls upon you. And you become the ones who will be the torchbearers of the standard of Imam Zaman when he comes. You are trying to tell us that because you want to hasten. Has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you to hasten that reappearance? He has asked you to be among those who will not do it. As to those who will do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know what to do, what not to do. Hmm? And then the Prophet said, and the women will become your Qibla, Allahu Akbar. And the dirham and dinar will be your religion. Dirham and dinar is Mapesa. Wanisaukum Qiblatukum Wadananir Waddirahim Dinukum. Now how the ladies became our Qibla? Is something which we should not now ask. Everybody knows. And there'll come a time when the ladies will wear dress. Allah Muhammad Rahman was baffled here when he saw this because it was written Tasiyatun Ariyat. They will have the dress on and yet be naked. He has written down there, I can't understand how the Prophet said. They will have dress on and yet be naked because he died 300 years ago. If he comes out from the grave today, we will show him what the Prophet said. The meaning of Kasiyatun Arya. So it doesn't mean that the ladies must do this to hasten the reappearance of Imam. It means that they should avoid this. And those who do, they will meet with their own accountability in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before I conclude, this is the night of Barat. Apart from being the night of the birth of our Imam, السلام, it is also the night of Barat. It is second in status to Shabi Qadr. It is mustahab to keep awake all night if you can. It is mustahab tomorrow to keep a fast. And tonight there are three Yaseen to be read. One is for long life, one is for barakah in your earnings, and one is for saving ourselves from sudden deaths. Then there is Dua Kumail because Sayyid al Awsiyah, Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib taught this Dua to Kumail and said, Ya Kumail. Read this dua every Thursday night, at the night of Jum'ah. If you cannot read it once in a month, and if you cannot read once in a month, read once in a year, preferably on 15th of Shaba. So we will read it, inshallah, tonight. Dua Kumay. Then there are three or four small, very small duas in which we remember all the Aimma who were born in this month one after the other, and there is a small amal for asking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
which we'll do. It won't take very long. And tomorrow is the day of fasting. Tonight, if you keep awake, please don't forget us in your dua. And if we keep awake, we will remember you all in dua, because a dua for others is always accepted earlier. Pray for the Ummah, as Mullah Sahib said. Pray for the whole Ummah of Islam to be saved from the cudgels of Kufr. Right? And if you are writing Ariza, inshallah ta'ala, in whatever language you write, remember all the Mu'mineen, inshallah, by remembering other Mu'mineen, your own wishes also will be fulfilled, inshallah ta'ala. Pray for all this, and pray that inshallah ta'ala, we all remain in good health, in good barakah in our day-to-day -day businesses, and our unity and muhabba and love among with ourselves is inshallah maintained throughout. And that he makes us among the faithful. <laughs> when he reappears, our Imam alayhi salam, we are among his helpers and assistants. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.